So welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this video, we will discuss the example of applying shortest route uh, linear programming model to solve uh, a traveling problem, a traveling business problem. So here we have a uh, Susan Winslow, right? Having to travel from Louisburg to Paducah, city one to city six. And uh, she collected all the, all the costs that are involved so this example is nice because uh, there is obviously the ticket cost which we understand but there is also a traveling time right there's also traveling time that we understand will take and oftentimes in our daily lives when we spend uh, lesser money to buy bus ticket it often takes a long long time and up we wonder what, whether we should have uh, spent a little bit more money to buy a, an airplane ticket so that it will save us the time involved, right? So this, this problem shows us how we can model that. So Susan uh, appreciates herself as earning $15 per hour. All right, so just fix an estimate constant. And the longer she travels, the more money, the more wasted uh, earning income earning opportunities she would uh, suffer. So if the traveling time of train, for example, Route A goes from city one to two. So the so there's a name for this link and it's called route A. Right. In in a map, this would be a road name, street name, and so on. So road route A is by train, it takes four hours and it costs twenty dollars. As opposed to a plane which is faster but costs a lot more. However, the four hours is also a cost, and the way we want to uh, model it is not to encourage the model to give us solutions that end up all taking trains, right? Because we would not really like it when we actually travel on it because it wastes a lot of time. So how can we build into the model to tell the model that, hey, you know what? Train tickets might cost a lot lesser. However, it's taking a long, long time. I don't really want to encourage you to bring me to the train route. So in this example, we mimic that by estimating the time of travel. And of course, we need to multiply the time by $15 per hour and add that variable cost to this fixed cost, the ticket cost, right? So there's this also a, a fixed and variable component here that basically eventually gets uh, merged together as a single total cost. So this example shows us uh, that we need to multiply four by the hourly rate of the so-called estimated loss in wage income plus the ticket cost, the fixed cost. That will be the final CIJ that we uh, plug into the model. All right, so we do that for the rest, collecting the hours, the travel time, and the ticket cost for the plane, for the bus, for the taxi. Nice, so wonderful example. And what we need to do is to pre-process the costs, right, by adding ticket cost to $15 times the variable hourly costs. So end up we have a total cost of each of taking uh, taking taking the mode of transport, whether by taxi, bus, or plane, or train, uh, for a particular route. Okay. And uh, end up we have this table here, all right? And of course, it is also possible that we have more than one links for example, here we say, or the problem states that there is train from city one to two. But if uh, there is a long distance journey bus that is way cheaper, having discount like $5, right? And it takes just a, just a bit longer, uh, six hours, uh, then we might want to also put that in uh, to let the solver explore whether that might be a better link than route A. But let's just stick with what we have here. And once we kind of summarize the costs and have the network diagram already in place and identify which is the starting node, node one, and which is the ending node, node six, then we are done because what we want is the shortest path connecting one and six from one to six, actually directional. Uh, and we have all the costs and we have all the interlinks and then we are done finish why because the model is just copy and paste we did not have any special uh customization for shortest route is very simple right it's a very very standard problem 
very little customization, if at all. Uh, customization is more like can this is this link bidirectional, right? So so we can do that edit, uh, rather on a one to one basis. If in real life we can go bidirectionally, then we do that. And for intermediate nodes connecting to intermediate nodes, if it's one way ticket, one way direction, then we just use one variable, even though. Uh, we learned that we should be doing both, right? So just reflect reality into the model will do. So without hesitation, we're just going to write out uh, the objective function. And because all the decision variables are very standardized, it's always ij and the direction is i to j. It's very standardized. Don't try to define your own convention here right? because you will confuse yourself, you will confuse the reader. So here, we should also define the xijs, but uh, it is quite well understood. And so we'll not use uh, have those crowd out the slide here. So we have the objective function and we have the source constraint, which ends up being just one constraint. We have the destination constraint also because uh, of shortest route specifying single destination. So we have one destination. And then we have a set of uh, intermediate node constraints, which will all follow total in equals to total out principle. Okay. Now you see a bunch of negative signs here, and they are very hard to understand, right? So what I suggest is you bring the negative signs across the equal sign. So now you will see that, for example, for node two, x two five plus x two six is equal to x one two plus five two. Let's look at the diagram. Uh, 2, 5 to 2, 6, those sound like outgoing, so add together, is equal to 1, 2 plus 5, 2. Those seem like incoming total outs, right? Uh, so total in equals to total out. That's for node 2. For node 3, we already did that earlier on, haven't we? So we have 1, 3, 5, 3, 4, 3 is equal to 3, 5, 3, 4, 3, 6. And indeed, if we check over here, uh, 1, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3 equals to 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. Exactly, right? So you can move around the terms, bring them across, become negative, but it is still implementing total in equals to total out. I'll leave it to you to check that node 4, this is the correct constraint to be applied to node 4 when we implement the total in equals to total out principle for node 4. Okay, so that's it. And it is important to note that because we know the standard template solution, as simplistic as this looks, we are very sure that we are done. We haven't left out any constraint. We don't have to worry and rethink over, have we missed out something that may end up uh, leaky, right? That, that may end up causing solver not to be able to find or converge to a solution. And we are very sure that we have done everything. Why? Because we have gone through that. We have gone from a uh, transportation problem to recognizing that shoulder shrub is also a transportation problem with modification, with additional intermediate nodes. We also uh, additionally constrained the intermediate nodes to pass on uh, whatever shipment that comes in so that it doesn't retain or, or hijack any uh, transported items like ourselves. Uh, and end up uh, thwarting or distorting the solution. Okay, so we are done with the model. Now let's take a look at how we do this in Excel. Okay, so let's look at the actual Excel, which looks like this. Okay, so we have the picture, you have the picture with you, and we are going to implement uh, the, the set of nodes and arcs. So as a start, we have the nodes, the cities, all right, listed here. So it's a little bit less less uh, congruent to the kind of setup we have seen earlier on. One column per variable or one table per problem. One table full of uh, the decision variables. Here we have the 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 nodes, right? We have six nodes, and we put them accordingly: starting node, ending node. We also are uh, going to uh, do the counting of the arcs, emanating, going out from the specified node and coming into the specified node like that. OK, 
Okay, so to, to, to discuss the formula here, let's first look at how we set up the description for the links, the arcs. Now that we have the notes, we can label the starting note, refer to it as one because that refers to this one, two refers to the note two, and so on. And we draw these numbers from the diagram. That means we're trying to reflect the network diagram onto the columns in a very regular tabular format. Okay, so link A, right, link A, and that means that link uh, is actually, there's a direction, it goes from 1 to 2. It goes from 1 to 2. Link B goes from 1 to 5. Okay, and so on. 1, 3, 1, 6. So how about uh, those links that go into the destination. So we have link J, which is uh, going from node 3 into 6, node 2 into 6, and so on. So that's easy. Now, how about those intermediate node linking to intermediate node? Like 3 to 5, right? Link G goes from 3 to 5. But earlier on, we said, since this is a link between intermediate nodes, and there is no arrow sign drawn for that link, it means we should treat it as bidirectional. So how do we treat it as bidirectional? In fact, we treat uh, all links as potentially bidirectional. So here we have the reverse of G, which is from 5 to 3. Okay, the reverse of G, we go from 5 to 3. And the reason why we reverse all links is because of uh, formula convenience. You see, this part we have to just type in and name them. This part we have to be very careful and enter them. There's no choice because we need to digitize the network diagram onto Excel. The cost here likewise we have to enter them because it's fresh copy. But after that the reverse link, uh, the reverse link assuming it costs the same to travel backwards, then we just copy from upstairs. Yeah okay so and that makes the the copying way easier just by equating the as a formula equate copy the value from upstairs so whenever we change upstairs the forward link cost the reverse link cost will be updated yeah uh, and of course we can make it easier if we say reverse link cost 10 percent more and that's always easy to implement in excel and the name we just conveniently say it is whatever is the original name tag upon to it a dash reverse just to remind ourselves it's the reverse of the same link. All right, so that again, we can just copy and paste and immediately we can uh, generate all the rest of the links. 